Hi, boys and girls. Um, I know we haven't been able to see each other much for several weeks. We've all been staying home and staying safe with our families, but we've missed you so much at Zion. We've missed you for church and for Sunday school. Today, I wanted to bring a Sunday school opening to you to explain Holy Week and the events that happen, because this is such an important, special week for all of us. So to do that, I have a couple helpers. I have Gabe and Ben here. And we are going to use some eggs to hear about what happened the week um, of Holy Week, the week that Jesus came to Jerusalem. Gabe, why don't you start by opening this first egg and show everybody what it is. A donkey. All right, so most people back in Jesus' time did not have any way to get around other than walking on their feet. They didn't have cars. Um, people, some people though rode on a donkey, but they were usually people that had a lot of money or, or who were royalty. So when the people of Jerusalem saw Je Jesus riding into town on a donkey, they thought he was a king. So they were very excited. They grabbed palm branches and started waving them around. They took off their coats and laid them on the ground so the donkey could walk over their coats, kind of like rolling out the red carpet for the president or for somebody special who might visit Mondovi. Um, this was the very beginning of our Holy Week that happened on Palm Sunday. Let's see what is in our next egg, Ben. Minnie. Ooh, money. We have some silver coins here. Not everybody was happy to see Jesus as his, as their king. Some pretended to be happy, but inside they were really not. And one of those pretenders was a man named Judas. Other men hated Jesus and they wanted to kill him, but they needed some help from somebody who was close to Jesus. So they offered that they would pay Judas 30 silver coins to help them arrest Jesus because they did not like him and they wanted to kill him. Let's see what happened next. Can we put that one back to you? Okay, so now we have a silver cup. Um, the reason Jesus went into Jerusalem at this time was because it was Passover week. Passover was a very special time for the Jewish people. And Jesus gathered with his friends, the disciples, to enjoy the Passover meal. They took a cup, and Jesus said something a little bit different and unusual this Passover. He took the cup, and he told them that something that was hard for them to understand, but he said that the wine in the cup was his blood. Now, he didn't mean it was actual blood they were going to drink, but that it represents blood. It's a symbol or a picture of his blood. He wanted them to remember that special night and the covenant or promise that he was making to all of them. Do you know what the promise is? Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to find out very yeah. soon. Okay. Now let's see what's in the orange egg. Oh, look at that. Here, set it here so the, everybody can see it. It's praying hands. After Jesus had that special meal with the disciples, they went to a garden, a special place to talk to God. Jesus wanted to talk to God alone. He was starting to get very sad about what was going to happen next and dread what was going to happen because he knew he was going to die soon. He was willing to do this, to take away all of our sins, but it was a very hard thing for him to have to do. Okay, The God part of him was willing to die for his great love for us, but the human part didn't want to have to go through the death because he knew that was going to be very painful. When you're afraid or sad, you should also pray like Jesus did. Can you put that one away, please, Ben? Gabe, why don't you open the green egg mm. and see what happened next? Okay. I'll rip. While they were pray praying in the garden, the men who wanted to kill Jesus took him as their prisoner. They brought Jesus to Pilate, their ruler, and they had Jesus whipped. The whip used was long and hard, and it hurt Jesus so much that he bled. Jesus hadn't done anything wrong. The men who wanted to kill him were afraid of losing power. They wanted Jesus out of their way. They wanted to be in charge themselves. That one there. Should we open this yellow egg now? <coughs> What do you see in that one? 
Oh, look at the rooster. Now you might all be wondering, what does a rooster have to do with our story of Jesus and the Holy Week? Well, Peter, who is one of Jesus's closest friends, um, heard this rooster the night that Jesus was arrested and tried. He heard it three times and it made him very sad because Jesus had predicted something. Earlier, Jesus had predicted that before the rooster crowed three times, that Peter would deny him. That means that he would say he doesn't know Jesus and he's not Jesus's friend. Sit down, buddy. Thanks. When, this, when the rooster crowed three times, Peter realized he had in fact told people he didn't know Jesus and it made him so sad because he realized in that moment that he had done exactly what he thought he never would do. It was a very sad time. He was ashamed and ran away. What's in the orange egg? A crown of spikes. A crown of thorns. thorns. That is correct. After Jesus had been whipped, the soldiers took branches with thorns and twisted them and made them in the shape of a crown to look like he was a king wearing a crown. But they shoved that crown down on his head and it made Jesus bleed. We know that because Jesus is the son of God, he would have stopped, he could have stopped the men from hurting him. But he chose not to because he was taking on himself the hurt that was ours, really, because we are the real sinners. He took all of that sin and punishment from the whole world onto himself because he loves us so much. Oh, what did you find? A cross. A cross, and what is it made out of? What does it look like the cross is made out of? Steel. Well, but what do, what do they look like they're in the shape of? Wood. Nails. Yeah. It's nails. Yep. Can you see that? The cross of nails. The soldiers took Jesus to the top of a hill outside the city. Then, using big nails, similar to these metal nails here, they nailed him to a rough wooden cross. The Bible tells us that Jesus was stronger than any man. The soldiers couldn't have killed Jesus if he had not let them. He could have fought them. Why didn't he? Because um, he knew God's plan. He did, and he did it willingly. He was suffering and dying because he loved us that much. He knew that this was all part of God's plan, and he loved us so much. He took that pain that was given to him. What do you see in that egg? A spear. A spear. Two robbers were crucified with Jesus, one on each side of him. And when the soldiers came to check the three men on the crosses, Jesus had already died. Just to make sure, though, the soldiers stabbed Jesus in the side with a spear. It is sad to think that Jesus died and that he died in such a cruel way. But I want you all to remember that Jesus gave up his life because he loves sinners, all of us. He loves us so much, even though we disobey him in so many ways, even the soldiers who pierced him in the side with a spear, he loves them too. Jesus died, and then a man named Joseph asked if he could bury him. This was a very brave and loving thing that Joseph did. You can hold the cloth up while I talk. Just hold it up. Thanks. Remember that the men who killed Jesus didn't believe he was the son of God, but Joseph did believe and he wanted Jesus to have a proper burial. So Joseph knew that this might get him into trouble with the soldiers, but he was very brave. He asked anyway if he could take the body of Jesus and bury him. Joseph wrapped the body of Jesus in cloth and buried him in a tomb cut out of rock like a shallow grave. Joseph went away sad because he knew that Jesus was dead and he wondered what would happen next. What'd you find in that one, Gabe? Hold um, it like this so they can see it. Okay. A rock, yes, this is to symbolize a stone, a very large stone that was rolled in front of Jesus's tomb. 
much, much bigger than the stone of this egg, that's for sure. It was a very big stone to cover the entire doorway and probably weighed more than a car. Um, after Jesus was buried, some special soldiers were assigned to stand guard outside of the tomb. But these men were no match for God's angel. It took just one angel to roll that stone away. The guards were so afraid that they fainted. Where did the angel get his strength from? God. God. Yeah, absolutely, from God. So that stone was rolled away on Easter morning. Then the women came to the tomb. What did they find? Open the last egg. Nothing. Nothing. That one's empty. You, you might have been a little surprised that that one didn't have anything in it. Well, the women were surprised too when they went and they found that there was oh, nothing gosh. in the tomb. Yeah, Jesus's body was gone. The, and then an angel showed up and told them he has risen. Jesus has come back to life. This was the promise Jesus made to his disciples at that special dinner that he had with them just a few days before. They didn't understand what it meant at the time, but this is what it meant, that he would die and he would come back to life and he would show himself to those who believed in him and that we would all get to live forever with him someday because of this. Because Jesus died for us, we get to meet him and thank him in heaven. That's pretty exciting, isn't it? You looking forward to meeting Jesus someday? Yes. Mm -hmm. I sure am. That's the story of, of Easter, and it is true. Why don't we pray together? Sit down, fold your hands, and repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, God I know that I have done things that are wrong. I know that I have done things that are wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to change. I want to change. Thank you for sending Jesus to die in my place, for forgiving me of my sins, and for making me new and clean inside. Please fill me with your love and teach me to love and obey you always. Amen. Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You guys say it with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have a wonderful Easter. Bye.